because to hear Utah Republican Senator Mike Lee tell it, Barack Obama's promise to raise taxes on the rich, no matter what, at the end of this year, you might as well sell this whole economy short. Uh, as we were getting the beginning of the show, Senator, you know, Democrats can, can claim, well, your, your intransigence to, to offer anything to him almost guarantees that shock. What, what, what do you think? Well, first of all, we've got a lot of Democrats who, in the last two years, have voted to extend the tax cuts. We've had for all. As, for all. Uh, we've had as Not recently a lot. Maybe as maybe like half a dozen. Uh, Forty who voted two years House. ago to do that. Well, now, now, Forty how many Democrats in the Senate who voted two years ago to extend I know all that. of the how tax cuts. How many now do you think? Well, it's, it's hard to count, but you've got, uh, for example, Dick Durbin uh, from Illinois, the Democratic whip in the Senate, who uh, a month ago today told Politico, you know, I, I, I think maybe what we ought to look at is a, is a short-term extension of a few right. months. So he that told me that can, at, a, at a, the, I think it was the vice presidential debate in Kentucky. Uh, is it your sense, though, that there is a way, or, or all of this is just posturing. I mean, um, that the, 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 the two sides are just sort of like, you know, warily looking at each other, but that there is already this move afoot among some of your colleagues to cement a deal and just push the button once either of these guys win. Well, yeah, I, th I think there is posturing on both sides. I think it's interesting that the president came out with this in some ways. I, I think it helps sharpen the debate as we approach this election because we we've got a very clear choice to make. Mitt Romney doesn't want taxes to go up. President Obama does. And we have to remember, Neil, that this tax increase, w while it's uh, pitched to people as a supposed tax increase just on the wealthy, it's not the wealthy that we're concerned about. It's the people who are going to be at the receiving end of this. It's no, the no, people no, but who are going to lose their jobs, who's going stuff. to lose wages it's as a result. It's all It sounds silly to say this, but you know Washington. And, and it's going to be pitched by the president and his cohorts saying, look, uh, we had a deal. They sacrificed tax rates that would have stayed low or stayed where they are for 98% of Americans or blah, 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 uh, for the sake of the great Poupon 2%. That's how they're going to pitch it, and that you torpedoed, not you specifically, but Republicans torpedoed a deal that was easily workable if they just budged on the 2%. Ernst & Young tells us we're going to lose 700,000 jobs if we do this, if we just raise this top marginal rate. Those 700,000 jobs are not going to be CEOs. Those 700,000 are not going to be top part of the top 1%. They're going to on, be... On, if you just raise the, the rich. You just raise the rich. You're going to lose 700,000 jobs. Now, predictably, those jobs are not going to come out of the top 1%. Those jobs are going to come from people who are living paycheck to paycheck. But here's what gets me going to the Washington Post story. It seems that the president is saying, I don't care what this bipartisan panel secretly comes up with or openly comes up with. If it doesn't involve ending the tax breaks for the well-to-do, I'm not doing it. Now, keep in mind, whether he wins or loses, he's still president through January 20th of next year. So... What do we do? If he wants to kill 700,000 jobs, he's going to. But Americans have a choice coming up in November, and they can exercise that choice in a, in a he way. He might double down on, on, on obstinance, though, and say, well, it's, I don't think it's a good idea. Let the new president handle it. But in the meantime, these rates are ending. Then in, what? In that unfortunate circumstance, we could have the new Congress and the new president in January retroactively restore the tax cuts as they've existed since 2001 and 2003. But hear what you're saying. Then that means you're going to have a few weeks where they jump up, and then a few weeks later, when tax rates are reflected in people's paychecks, retroactively or not, that's confusing. Not ideal. All the more reason why we shouldn't do it in the first place. All right. But now your hope with Mitt Romney and he wins, and obviously you work for Republican Senate, is that the path is cleared for an extension and one that is for a simplified tax code. They, they, they battle out next year, right? They battle out next year, extending it temporarily so that we can iron out a more comprehensive tax reform plan, one that lowers the rates while consolidating loopholes. Right. Fingers crossed or whatever other appendage. Uh, Senator, thank you very, very much. Good seeing you.